I think I am in the mood for a challenge. I'll take you up on that, Farnsworth. I'm John Zadar. I am the host of On Top and Hot, and this is the weekend of April 27th. We are going to be taking a look at a mining company, which I normally don't look at because I don't understand everything I'm reading. A lot of technical jargon, so I personally don't trade them, but I've got friends that do. And one of my friends is Farnsworth. Farnsworth loves to trade these mining companies, and there's no shortage of them either. There's a lot of them, and he doesn't really care if it's copper, gold, silver. It just doesn't matter to him. Well, we were in a conversation the other day, and lithium came up. How many different companies are dealing with lithium right now for these EV batteries? And he brought to my attention there aren't enough companies mining nickel. Nickel is very prevalent in these EV batteries. Most batteries have about 60 kilograms of nickel in them. So that's what I found. He didn't think I could find a decent one. This is a Canadian nickel company that just got a hot nickel piece of property up there, and they're going to get a lot of backing from Canada. This is ticker PNPNF, Power Nickel Inc. She finished the day just a little over 16 cents and about 1.5% drop. She's on the middle tier of the OTC. This is a good thing. This means they have to audit their financials. We like that. Makes them more trustworthy, more transparent. They've got a verified profile, but I don't see that verified transfer agent I do like to see. If you're going to be in a stock for a long hold, those two ticks, the verified profile and transfer agent verified, are ones you want to see. If you're just trading a stock for a short amount of time, you don't have to be too concerned about it. They've also got independent directors. You need these whenever you uplist, and I don't know of a whole lot of other reasons for independent directors. So they probably used them when they came from the pink to the QB, and if they have plans of going, like, say, to the NASDAQ, they're going to need them then as well. And they're still sitting here, and like I said, you don't need independent directors unless you have plans of uplisting. So let's get some more information about Power Nickel. Power Nickel is a Canadian junior exploration company focusing on high potential copper, gold, and battery metal prospects in Canada and Chile. They've got four projects in Chile. I think they're all with copper. And they've got two in Canada, one on each coast. Uh, they've got one that deals with gold. And now they've got one that deals with nickel. Power Nickel, then called Chilean Metals, completed the acquisition of its option to acquire up to 80% of the NISC project from Critical Elements Lithium, ticker CRE, on the Canadian market. The NISC property comprises a large land position, about 20 kilometers of strike length, with numerous high-grade intercepts. They're claiming this is grade A high clean nickel, with some of the best nickel they found in the world. Power Nickel is focused on expanding its current high-grade nickel copper PGE mineralization NI43101 resource with a series of drill programs designed to test the initial NISC discovery zone. Now this is important folks, I know that sounded real dry, but this NI43101 boy that's an important form for me and you. This this makes sure that they're not exaggerating, that they're not lying, that they're not embellishing the numbers. We are getting hardcore facts. It's like a CPA looking at the financials. We're getting real numbers here because they had a problem with this a while ago and they've made rules now. So we are covered in that regard. Now, what's really special about this company right now is that they are getting subsidized by Canada up to 50% for exploration because Canada wants that nickel. They need this nickel. They have to have 20% of their cars all electric by 2026 or they get a fine. I think it's $20,000 or something. I'm not real sure, but they are motivated just like the United States is and they want to get this from their own country. Well, they've got a couple of big mines up there already and one of them is 20 million tons. One is 50 million tons. It's a very famous one and this one was looking to be about 8 to 10 million tons not anymore. Their drillings have looked to be about 20 to 50 million tons, and everybody is excited about this. Now, here in America, we do have subsidy programs as well. They had one in Minnesota, covered about 27% of their exploration costs. As I said, Canada is covering 50%. I think it is the cheapest place in the world for mining to be done on nickel right now. So, what else can I tell you about this company? Well, as long as we're talking general information, I got more to share with you. 
not for lack of technical information, e gads. I'm over here at the company's website right now. This is powernickel.com. And folks, it is loaded with technical information and we're not gonna look at any of it. So if you're interested in charts and diagrams and technical details, schematics, this is your type of site. Plus, they just came out with a presentation here recently. A presentation is like a digital brochure and it's got a lot of current information on it. So we're not gonna look at any technical information. You may see it go by on the screen, but we're not gonna talk about it. We've got some general information we can glean some more facts from. This NISC property, this is in Quebec, Canada. This is their Flagstaff project right now, getting the most attention from them because the world is in this EV revolution. We need nickel, so they're concentrating on it. They tell us the NISC property is composed of two blocks, totally 90 claims, covering an area of 46 square kilometers and a length of 20 kilometers. It's a pretty huge parcel. Now, you can see we've got diagrams of all sorts, lots of pretty colors, and that's what they are to me, pretty colors, nothing else. Now, they tell us here that nickel, when you discover it, you find pods of it. And normally when you find one pod, you find another and another, and that seems to be the case with NISC. They tell us here that NISC has four distinct target areas covering over seven kilometers of strike length. Our focus has been on the NISC main. Historically though, we know that nickel sulfide deposits typically have multiple pods and we believe NISC is no exception. We are encouraged by what we see on the NISC main and we feel we can continue to build commercial tonnage there. But we are also looking forward to exploring NISC West and the two Wildcat targets in subsequent drillings. So they've got those six projects around the world in Chile and in Canada, but they've got lots of mini projects, I guess you'd call it, right here in this area. So they are still growing. Now there's a lot more information on this one page, but we're not going to touch any of it. But I do want to share that presentation with you so you can see what that's all about. Now as you've probably already guessed, we are not going to discuss the technical stuff. We're going to scroll by so you can get an idea of what's here, but I'm not talking about any of it. I'm not going to call it schematics, diagrams. <laughs> you're just going to see they've got a lot here. So if this is really what you're into, folks, come over here to this presentation. But me, I'm a bullet man. I like to read sentences, and we got lots of bullets down here. Now, I'm not going to go through all of these because you know how to read, and some of them I just don't understand. So again, it's tough for me to explain all of this to you. But for those in the know, it means something. What you need to know is this is the world's first carbon neutral nickel mine. That sounds exciting. Now, I don't understand most of what they're talking about here, but I get this. They have a hydropower center right next to them, an electric company using water to make energy, and that's where they're getting their energy from. So that's a good thing. And of course, all these other things as well. Here's their plan of action this is right up to now this came out the first quarter of 2023 so this is the most current information you can get they've got release drill results at the end of 2022 and the beginning of 2023 we are doing that right now they are doing a lot of this right now and that's the whole reason we're looking at it because they are moving from exploration to commercialization and this is a big deal when a company does that that's when investors start looking at it and that's when money starts pouring in this was something i found surprising i didn't see this anywhere except inside this presentation proposed public spinoff it looks like they want to take all of their copper mines and gold mines and put them into one subsidiary and spin it off which means any shares you own of this company you would get dividends in that new company so as you can see, there is a lot of information here, and most of it's going to be better for you than for me. Now let's get information I do understand. Let's jump on over to that OTC market. Oh, it always feels good to get back home to familiar turf. We are at the OTC market checking out the relative volume of PNPNF. She is normally doing 22,500 shares a day, which is definitely under the radar. Friday, she more than tripled that, going over 76,000 shares. Now, I'm not saying either number is big, but tripling your volume in one day is a big deal. More people are paying attention to her now. Share structure for power, nickel. Outstanding share count is 91 million. Tell us the unrestricted is the same, 91 million. And this is normally what I presume is the float. But they tell us the float down here, as of February this year, is also 91 million. 
Now, it's not like I doubted them or anything, right? But I did do a Google search and I couldn't find anything. Actually, I only had two results come up out of all the internet, only two results, and neither one of them had any numbers. So I'm going to presume the float is 91 million. Looking at the financials for the company, there is nothing on the books annually and there's nothing on the books quarterly because they are an exploration company, like a research and development of a biopharmaceutical. But they are coming into commercialization and they are fully funded, which I have failed to mention up to this time. Once they get going, they're ready to go. So they don't have any revenues yet, but they're just around the corner. Now, when you're looking for news on the OTC market, you've got to remember to scroll down. We do have current news up here, right there, 428. They had an investor conference. Matter of fact, they do a lot of investor conferences. This is for 2022 and 2023. But scrolling down, you find more news. So if you think it's all upstairs, it isn't. This one came out on the 27th. Hole 23 delivers. You see that exclamation point at the end? Power Nickel final drill results from the fall 2022 drill program and initial drill results from winter 2023. This is that news press. There's a lot of information here, folks, and most of it is technical, so I'm not going through most of it. This is all for you. But there is a little bit of information up here that confirms what we need to know. Things are going the right way. The company continues to confirm the presence of high-grade nickel mineralization in main zone of its NISC project near James Bay, Quebec. In addition, step-out exploration drilling 800 meters east of main zone shows indications of new nickel. So they've got lots going on right now, folks. And as I said, you can really get the details of that information if you're interested. I'm not going any deeper than that. However, I will jump into that chart. You want to join me? Come on, I got room in the back seat. This is PNPNF, and we're doing our charting on Thinkorswim, the free trading platform you get from TD Ameritrade. Now, folks, I really like this chart. It looks sweet to me. We have had an uptrend here for months, and even though she has fallen back considerably, she has fallen to a very opportune position as far as I'm concerned. This is a one-day, one-year chart we're looking at right now. She had a low bubble in October of $0.06, cents, hit a high of almost $0.27 at the end of February, then had this big fall coming underneath her 50-day SMA, and it looks bad. But let's put some perspective on this. We're going to use two tools here. First, we're going to start with our Fibonacci. Poke the bottom of your surge and then go to the top of the surge and poke that. What I am looking for is to see if she has kept at least 50% of the gains in that run. If she's gone from 50 or more, chances are she'll stay above that and climb. But if she came under 50, chances are she'll continue to fall. Here's my 50% mark. Going straight across and voila, look at that. Came down, she did break it, she bounced back up, tested a little bit more, and now she's living on that halfway point. She tried to bounce off of it over the 20, she's come back down, and she's still sitting on top of it. That looks good to me. I'd like to see that. Let's take another perspective now. We are going to use our regression channel. Again, poke the bottom of your surge and then just drag it out as far as you want it to go and stop it. What we see here is the trend, where she has been living. That is her channel. She was stuck right here in the middle, the halfway point. That's what that white line's for. And then she pushed off of it, actually broke out of her channel, hitting that high, lots of strength, and then fell fast. Coming down through her halfway point, down to the floor of this channel. And right now, she's rubbing against that channel. She is testing it. Now remember, she's on her halfway point on the Fibonacci, which we consider a strong place to be. She's at the bottom of this channel, which she's been in this channel for months. So the likelihood of her actually coming out and staying out aren't that good. So this is actually an opportune position to consider an entry into this company because she would probably start growing here off of that 50% mark and off the bottom of this channel. Now, if you look closely before the low bubble, the volume was a lot less than it is now. There is more volume here. It doesn't look a lot like it, but it is increasing. Our oscillators, they are weak. That's the best I can say. Our PPO, percentage price oscillator, that is pushing down right now. Our MACD looks like it's got a 
imminent crossover going down, and our RSI right now is at 44, which is pretty cool. Let's take a look at that six-month, four-hour view. Well, look at that. Boy, my eyes caught that immediately. The price is sitting on the 200-day SMA on the four-hour chart. These are all strong positions. It's sitting on top of everything it needs to be sitting on. So we've got this run on top of the 50. She came down and she's sitting on that 200. Oscillators say she's still falling. She is still fighting this position right now. This is really an opportune time to watch this, folks, because I get the feeling she's going to dip. She may come just underneath this and then come back up and start to run. Just a feeling. Uh, MACD's pushing down. PPO's pushing down. RSI is now at 43. Urgh. Let's look at our one hour, 20 day view. We're under the 200 now and she's actually going sideways, right? She's jumping. Boy, that's a pretty good jump, right? We're going from about 16 cents up to 19 cents. I mean, that's a three cent jump there in one hour. She comes back down, rolls back up. She's just doing a lot of rolling around the 50 day SMA. That's where she's hunkered down to. Oscillators are still not looking any better. She is pushing down. Everything is in agreement. Five day, five minute. Not a lot of trading going on. We don't have a lot of bars here. She has been falling the last two days. She is underneath her nine day SMA, meaning she's probably going to still fall. I don't see any recovery on any of the oscillators right now. But again, I say because she's on the halfway point of her Fibonacci, that big long run, and she's on the very bottom of the channel that she's been living in for months. And she's on top of the 200 on the four hour chart. I think she's in a strong position. She may dip a little and then jump. You think of it like a cat pouncing. They have to crouch down low before they can go up higher. And that's what I think may happen here. So what have we learned? Well, let's take a uh, gander at some of the highlights that we've covered so that you don't forget. The company has a lot going on for itself right now. And one of the biggest advantages is they have the financial backing of Canada. For every dollar the company invests, Canada will match them 50 cents. They are paying for half of all of their expiration costs. It cannot be done any cheaper anywhere else in the world. They are also using the Hydro Quebec substation across the road, supplying their low carbon, inexpensive hydropower. Anything green is good with me. They are also working in a stable political environment with strong government and First Nation partners. Canada is working with the United States, which is working with the world. I mean, really, everybody is on this EV revolution evolution, right? So we're all working together and Canada is very serious about it. Uh, they are also located beside a major highway and a nearby town. They're not out in the middle of nowhere. And one thing we didn't cover, shallow mineral depth. This nickel is not deep, deep, deep under the ground, so it's not going to be as much work to get it out. And a bonus we discovered by looking at the presentation, they are considering a spin out of their gold and their copper mines onto the NASDAQ, which would give us free dividend shares. Folks, you know I didn't cover <laughs> everything. There's a lot there to cover, and it wasn't because I was lazy. It's because I was scared. Please, do your own DD if you can comprehend it. The more you know, the more you're going to grow. See you, folks. Para para pa para para pa pa para para pa para para pa pa ti ra di tu tu ru ru pa pa ra pa 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 ra di ra du pa pa.